If you don't have access to a portable appliance tester, this is probably your next best choice. It's designed specifically for testing electrical equipment, unlike a, um, a multimeter. And you'll see that it has an analog scale. Now I'll refer back to the earlier lessons on reading analog scale, and this will start to make a bit of sense. And we'll go through the scales as we do. The first thing you do on these is a battery check. This is your switch here, press to test. You can either press it and release it, or you can press it and lock it. Battery check. You can see the battery check there. If the battery is good, within the good range, and that's all you need to do with that. It has two ohm scales, a 500 ohm and a 3 ohm scale. You, for doing testing leads and testing almost any electrical equipment, you'll be using a 3 ohm scale. Now before you use a mega or any other multimeter, you should make sure the zero is correct. Now if you have a look here, we're in the green zone. So we're using the green scales. I'm on the 3 ohm scale, so we read off the 3 ohm scale, which is the top scale. Right, to zero the meter, connect your lead, and you'll see down on this end of the scale, it says 0 0.51. Here's your zero adjustment. So you twiddle that until the needle says zero. Now while we're there, if you have a look at the if you have a look at the back of the scale you'll see there's a mirror. Now the idea of the mirror is to stop what's called parallax error. If you look off to the side of the needle, you'll get an incorrect reading. So what you do you look directly down over there so that the reflection of the needle is directly behind the needle. And that way you won't get any error from looking off at the side. Okay, having said that, let's readjust the zero. Now you should do this every time go through this routine. Every day, check your battery. Every reasonable period, check your zero adjustment. Then we go into our mega ohm scale. You see it's divided into 250 volts, 500 volts and 1000 volts. 250 will go to 100 mega ohms, 500 will go to 200 mega ohms and 1000 will go to 400 mega ohms. Now don't play on any of those scales because believe me if you, it's live now, if I went between those two terminals, I would get a 500 volt shock. And it does hurt. All of your testing will be on 500 volts for testing leads. And you'll see there is only one, one scale, but you'll see here it says 250 volts, 500 volts, 1000 volts. At 250 volts, it reads half scale, so if it read one mega ohm, which is more or less centre scale, the reading would actually be half a mega ohm. And on the 1000 volt scale, you'd double it. So if the reading said one mega ohm on a 1000 volts, the reading would actually be two mega ohms. And you'll notice that the scale isn't linear, it's what's called a log scale, unlike the the um, insulation resistance, sorry, unlike the earth resistance. That is because of the way it is set up. Now I'm not going to go into the technicalities of it. Just be aware that the scale isn't linear. The centre scale is 1 ohm and just to the left of that is 2 ohm, uh, sorry, centre scale is 1 mega ohm, just to the left of that is 2 mega ohms 
and there's 5 megaohms, 10 megaohms, and as you go further across, it gets tighter and tighter. All right, so that's enough about how it works. Let's see what you do with it. You remember the first test you did was the physical check? Then we checked for earth resistance. We connect one probe to the earth pin and the other probe we inserted in the earth. And there we have about 0.2 of an ohm, which is about what we would expect in a lead this long. Have I got you on camera there? There you are. That's how you do it. Now, as always, ensure that you have the whole lead in your hand whenever you're doing this test. There's the earth there. The next test we do is to check between the active and the earth and neutral for insulation resistance. What we're doing, we're putting 500 volts between those two wires and the earth pin. So we change it to 500 volts. We briefly touch the probe just to make sure the meter is actually working. Now you must always do that. Touch your probe to earth. If there was any weakness in the insulation, that would show up as a zero reading. Then after you've done it, touch your probe back. Because it can happen, it will happen, and it does happen, that these things die. So before you do the test, make sure it works. Do the test. After the test, make sure it works again. For checking the polarity, you can do the polarity. You can do the polarity on either that or it's better to do it on the three ohm. Remember the rule. Plug in your right hand, earth to the ground. Socket in your left hand, earth to the ground. Connect your probe to the active. Press your probe in the active and that polarity is correct. Just to prove it. And that's all the tests you need to do on a lead. As I said, if you have one of these, it's certainly better than using a standard multimeter. Because this has a 3 ohm scale, with 1 ohm being more or less centre scale, whereas this one has a 200 ohm scale. But these are a little more expensive, several hundred dollars compared to ten dollars for that one. When you've finished using your mega or your multimeter, there's a couple of things that you should do. If you turn the mega over, you'll see it has six AA batteries. Fairly expensive to replace on a daily basis. If you look in closely there, you'll see there's a fuse. And in the back of the cover here, there's a spare. If you accidentally put that across a voltage when you're in the wrong scale, there is a possibility that that fuse will blow. There's also a possibility that you'll blow up the mechanism. So be aware, as I've said many times, do not plug your multimeter or mega into live mains. Make sure you have the plug in your hand all of the time that you're working on it or on the bench in front of you. Okay, the next thing we do, if you're using your mega, always turn it off. Otherwise the batteries will be flat in a couple of hours. So the best way is to just press while you want to test and let it go or ensure that the line on the knob is vertical. 
A good way to check is to turn it to either battery check or the ohm scale. And you will see the, the, the needle move. If you're on any of the high voltage scales, that doesn't happen. But in the background, the high voltage generator is working. So that, again, will flatten your battery. So always make sure you turn it off. Another fairly important thing when you turn it off is never leave it on the 500 or 240 volt scale. Because I can almost guarantee you that at some point, somewhere along the line, you're going to pick your leads up and you will get a fairly nasty shock. You notice it also has a 1000 volt scale. Never use it on 1000 volts. There is no need for you to use it on 1000 volts. That is a very specialised range that is only available normally to tradespersons. So you, the only testing you will ever be doing is on the 500 or if there is a surge protection you can go down to 250 volts. But never 1000 volts because you will do damage to some equipment and yourself. I've never had the 1000 volt shock and I'm not going to do it just to prove it. All right. The same applies to your multimeters. Always ensure that you turn them off because in the back of these there is a 9 volt battery and it will flatten it overnight if it takes that long. Depending of course on what scale you're on. As far as care of your unit goes, always put them back in their box. These cheapies don't have boxes, but the Mega has a cover over it, which I have out in the shed. I've taken it off just for the purpose of demonstration, but I always put the cover over it. And if your meter, this is a tong test or a clamp meter that you'll see in one of the lessons, always keep it inside the case. They are delicate instruments, they look robust, but as with all electronic equipment, it can easily be damaged and they are very expensive to repair.